Whether you have a diagnosis or not, I don't care. Jump inside this podcast and I'm going to teach you how to read your own blood work so you can find the answers to your health concerns. Yes, those normal labs that your doctor keeps saying, oh, they look great. We'll see you again in six months. They really have answers in them if you know how to read it correctly. So come join me along this journey, leave a review and share with your friends. Let's dive in. What health coaching certification program do I recommend? I get this question asked all the time. Well, I've finally vetted them out. And the one program that outshines all others is Functional Diagnostic Nutrition, or FDN. There are three reasons why. One, it's very clinically based and teaches labs. I myself turned down a master's degree in functional medicine because it didn't teach labs. Two, you have lifetime access and it always gets updated. This is important because things change and you need to be in the know. Three, when you complete the training on your timeline, they have an incredible post-grad community. So they don't just kick you out on the streets and say, good luck. If you've been thinking about receiving your health coaching certification or are a practitioner looking to branch out and scale a virtual practice, now is the time. Make 2023 your year. Do this for you your family, and those you're about to help. Go to fdntraining.com slash Dr. Kylie. Check the show notes for a $250 off code available for a limited time. I am happy to announce that I have partnered with Functional Diagnostic Nutrition because I love their program so much. They are now the podcast sponsor. All right, let's get into the podcast episode. Here we go. Welcome to the Beyond the Diagnosis podcast with me, Dr. Kylie. We have a special guest on today, as are all of my guests, let's just be honest. Beth Schupanitz is a nutrition response testing practitioner and a functional blood work specialist. So she has a program that's seven days. If you want to get off the sugar, do easysugarcleanse.com. It's a seven-day challenge for you. But today's topic is all about bronchitis. That's been her experience and bronchitis. I mean, I've experienced it multiple times too. And as you can all tell, it's winter time in Utah where I currently am and breathing is difficult nearly all year long because of the crap air. So Beth, I cannot wait to dive into lungs and bronchitis and not only how we can do it in the now, but how we can prevent it in the future. Welcome on. Thank you. Pleasure to be here with you. So Beth, describe to me your experience with bronchitis, because I know you said some crazy number like before you were 15 years old. Yeah, well, actually, the number was 15 times I had bronchitis by the time I was 19. Okay. So every year it would happen like spring and fall. I ran track and I live in Minnesota, so we can have, you know, really cold and then 70 degree weather in two days. So you know, the cold and hot, but I ran track, played soccer, and I think the sweating and hot, cold in those seasons and then allergies always caused all this sinus nasal stuff that eventually lodged into my lungs. Yeah. When I first, the first time I got pneumonia, which I think is the only time I got pneumonia, same story. I was running track in the cold, in the springtime, the 800 and it, my lungs just didn't do it. Yep. And I've never done it since, nor do I care to ever do it, even though I have three brothers who all run it near professionally. It just was not for me. Yeah. So it sounds like you were something similar with the cold air, mixing with exercise, and sometimes you just shouldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I found out that that really wasn't probably the root cause on why it happened, you know, as I went through my healing journey, but it definitely was a trigger and a link that it always yeah. seemed to happen during that seasonal change and that coldness and the extra stress that I was doing in a sport. So, so what did you experience as digging in deeper to get rid of the recurring bronchitis, but also preventing it from ever occurring? Yeah, well, one thing that we should maybe back up to is that I remember being in the doctor's office, I think I was around 10 or 12 years old, and we were in the waiting room and I was coughing so hard, so uncontrollably, that I couldn't get control of, of 
the cough. And so I went down into the entryway and um, I don't even know if it was a garbage or not, but I coughed up so much um, that, I mean, it just came up, but I wasn't throwing up. It was all from my lungs. And um, I remember then being able to see the doctor and asking him, is it possible that these antibiotics that you give me every year, sometimes twice a year, three times a year, um, causing a problem? Because why does this keep happening that every year I keep getting it? And he's like, oh, no, the antibiotics are fine. Um, You know, they they gave it out like candy all the time for anything and everything. And um, with that, I truly believe that it caused a lot of my long-term reoccurrence and other issues because I had so many other gut issues that happened because of that. So it's, you know, all part of it because those antibiotics, you know, they kill the bacteria, but they don't, they kill all the good and the bad. And they really messed up my liver and my digestive tract. And I was having things oscillating back and forth all the time, even when I didn't have the bronchitis because of, you know, trying to get rid of the antibiotics. So once again, it was a full body approach to healing, not just rubbing something on your lungs or taking something for your lungs, it was, no, we got to figure out all of the components so it can all heal at the same time. That's right. That's right. So what did you do? So after about three years of going to the medical system and getting all sorts of testing, stools testing, blood work, all sorts of stuff, they tapped me on the shoulder and they said, honey, you're stressed out. Go home and relax. I'm like, I'm a college student in my 20s. What do I have to be stressed out about? And, and on a recommendation of a friend, she told me to go to a friend of hers who was a traditional Chinese herbal medicine and um, nutritionist. And so I went to her. She did an extensive health history um, background. She did some blood and urine work. And um, the suspicion came back that I had some food sensitivities which I never, ever in the time that I was doing all the testing with in the medical system, they never want to ask me about my foods, never. Um, and so we found out that I had some gluten and dairy sensitivities and that because of that, I had leaky gut, you know, leaky gut penetrating right through the gut wall toxicity into my bloodstream, which was causing all sorts of issues. And, um, and from there, I, my liver, um, markers on the blood work, your AST and ALT were very elevated, but nobody ever said anything to me about that either. And so um, she put me on a food elimination um, diet and program, and we did a lot of healing and repair. So, you know, it's one thing just to take out the offending food, but it's another thing, part two, you got to heal and repair the damage that has taken place. So within about six weeks, I could notice noticeable changes. Like I was sleeping better. I didn't have the achy legs as much anymore. Um, my bowels were normal. I didn't have diarrhea on a weekly basis. Um, my acne was starting to clear up. My energy improved, my sleeping improved all just within six weeks. Now it didn't take care of everything in six weeks, but we were definitely on the right path at that point. Six weeks is pretty fast. Yeah, I noticed a huge difference in that time period, but I took out the food. I remember when I added a piece of dairy, just one slice, and the next day I was so achy and had such a huge migraine because that was another thing I suffered from was headaches. Um, And just getting rid of that one piece of dairy made, um, or, or adding in that one piece of dairy I could totally notice a change in my body and how it felt. So that I knew for sure was a food that I needed to get rid of um, for a time being. Now, today, years later, um, I can um, handle some dairy back in. But at that time, my body just really needed a period of healing. And so with the liver cleanses and the gut repair and protection and the food elimination, those were the biggest factors in what I needed to do. Yeah. Dairy is a huge culprit for me too. Yeah. Just yeah. basically causes asthma. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the mucus <clears throat> forming in the dairy, you know, I find that people with respiratory or lung stuff, you know, sinus, 
all of that, if you get them off of the dairy, that helps tremendously in that mucus forming and congestion and that sort of thing. So cleaning up my gut is really what got me to clean up, you know, the bronchitis and getting sick from it. So cleaning up your gut began with cutting out the inflammatory foods. Yes. And then what else did it include? Well, I did, um, I want to say it was a month long liver detox. Um, if I remember the time frame. this is a while ago. Um, and then adding once we cleaned out the offending foods, because I came up with high bacteria and high viral load, I came up, you know, with the liver enzymes off and uh, my cholesterol was super, super low. And I'll, I'll explain some of that a little bit later on. But once we clean those up and started to add the ba- good things back in, such as the probiotics, the enzymes and supportive um, herbs for my liver, I, you know, things started to work normal again, or the way that they should be working, not my normal, because my normal wasn't normal. (laughs) Um, And when we did that, things made a huge turnaround as far as my health. Nice. I'm guessing you take the same philosophies and the same steps with your current patients. That's right. Walk us through one of your most favorite transformations that you've seen in a patient experience? Well, I just had um, a 60 day uh, follow up check in with one of my clients who have suffered from IBS for the last 15 years. And um, a weekly basis, embarrassing running to the bathroom type of ep- episodes for her. Um, that so much that it affected her job. She was a tennis coach. Mm-hmm. And um, she uh, didn't, she tried all sorts of things. And so when I looked at her functional blood work, And then I did a nutrition response muscle testing with her to customize what her body wanted. Um, She had 60 days of no odd bathroom moments at all. Um, So that was like monumental for her because that hadn't happened to her in 15 years. And the biggest thing is we started with a food elimination diet and um, she's really doing well on that and um, feels good. She's even lost some weight and her energy has improved quite a bit and um, she's feeling good. Uh, the biggest thing that we saw also with her, she had bacterial and uh, viral and we needed to improve her vitamin D levels. So that's step one is, is you know, really well, step one is looking at anemia and uh, vitamin D. And she her, she didn't have anemia, but her vitamin D was low. But then step two is looking at that gut and infections and kind of healing and repair. And that's the step that we're at now. And so um, that was m- most- I recent. love that step for mm-hmm. IBS and IBD and Crohn's and UC and all the yep. gut things. Yep. yep. Great step. You, got you might find when you get into like the gut replenishing stuff- I'll just give you a heads up. She may not ever need probiotics and prebiotics. Yeah. Because you, when you introduce those on occasion to somebody with true SIBO or CFO, yep. they do not. Yeah. yeah. Symptoms just revert right back. So that's, that's very impressive. 60 days of no flares or occurrences yep. where she's used to having them weekly. Yep. And not only that, now she gets to go be the tennis coach that she wants to be. That's right. That's right. So it's multifaceted in the approach. I love it. Okay. One more. One more um, recent. I don't care. Um, Well, I have uh, uh, my son. Uh, Okay. So I have two sons and one son is pretty good about taking his supplements and the other one refuses and he fights me on it. So mom is deciding that's me, mom. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna force the supplements on him. He just does his thing. Well, the one that won't take the supplements, they both got sick with a cold, with half the school got sick with a little bit of a cold. My son that's taken the supplements in his protocol, um, after I muscle tested him, he um was done in two days. A week later, the one that's not taking anything is still not feeling so good. And um today, I think just to spite me, he grabbed cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, well, dude, you're, you know, you're not feeling the greatest. Um, and so I'm, I think I'm going to have to force it today because he's not getting better. So it's like, can't do it without, you got to give your body what it needs, right? You know, you got to support it. 
My kids, I'll find them because the vitamin D liquid from systemic formulas is tastes like orange soda. Yeah. It's and my kids love it. Yeah. They're five and two. And I'll catch them, the five year old trying to reach up into the shelf on the in the fridge and get his vitamin D oh, so he can take it. And then I have a someone gave it to me in an event as like a as a sampler thing. And it's like a little vitamin C immune booster, but it's shaped like a mandarin orange piece. Oh, okay. So he's always like, Can I have my little orange? And and it's one of the things that I'm like, okay, dude, we can take this. And I love that you like you were willing to take it, but I I can't give you too much of it. Right. So we usually alternate. We usually do vitamin D on the one day and then the other one on, on the next day. Um, but yeah, definitely fueling the body with those things. I know during the winter times I've been taking like eight capsules of DV3 a day, which is around 25,000 IUs of vitamin D per day. And I just, I feel like when everybody around, like especially my family and my my extended family and the nieces and nephews, like when they get sick and if my kids get sick, we pop right out of it. Yep. It's definitely worth it. So speaking of immune boosters, what, what tricks you got up your sleeve for immune boosters as we're as this is airing in the springtime around allergy season. Sure. Well, I love systemic formulas products. Um, the VIVI or Vivi is a great for viral. Um, they have a newer product that I've been seeing a lot of great results with is BioClear 1 and BioClear 2. Yeah, me too. Um, those have been working really well. And what I love is that they cross pathogens. So whether it be fungal or bacterial or parasitic or viral, it can work to enhance all of that. And I've been coupling that with um, enzy- NZ, an enzymatic product, herbal product, and then bind. Um, and if they don't test for bind, I'll give them, um, have them try out ACX and usually that will test as well. And that has a lot of great um, vitamin A. Just don't give too much of that. <laughs> usually it's such a, a really potent product. One capsule is pretty good um, on ACX, but those for the immune system, supporting it, prevention, getting rid of are, is really nice. I don't like to have them on it for too long, but, you know, rotating those are a great way to keep those going. Um, and then I have some homeopathic um, products too that, you know, for kids that, you know, if they don't want to swallow a pill, they have the liquids and the inflammatone and drainage tone from energetics are really good to have on hand too. Along with cool. DV3, everybody gets DV3. We all need that. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. As we finish up here, explain to people your easy sugar cleanse challenge. Yeah, you know, that um, challenge was put together because so many people come to me and a lot of them are coming because they're living a lifestyle that doesn't enhance the body and what the body needs. And, um, you know, coming from a fast food or TV dinner, quick and easy type of meals, how do you transfer over that lifestyle and implementing a healthier lifestyle can be a pretty difficult task for some people. So the seven day sugar cleanse, I sat down and said, okay, what did I do? Because my diet wasn't perfect back in my twenties when I was experiencing all of this and my cravings were unbearable because of the antibiotics. I had so much craving. I remember, you know, eating the red hots and the sugar and, and, um, you know, it, Mountain Dew and a Snicker bar is at three o'clock at my first job. I remember I was in the, at the vending machine all the time. So I had uncontrollable cravings. Um, and so I finally realized and understood that it wasn't necessarily me and my lack of motivation, but really a chemistry lab going on inside of my body mm-hmm. because of I all can. the damage that had taken place from the antibiotics. And so when I put together the seven day sugar cleanse, I put it together to make it a stepping stone from going to fast food, vending machine food to prepackaged foods to adding in some things that we can cook at home and starting to push out or crowd out the high offending foods, the top seven high allergen foods. So that's, you know, gluten and dairy and sugar and corn, peanuts. Um, I left eggs and eggs. Um, eggs I, I left in there because they are a good protein source. Um, but that's yeah. a lot of people do. I don't, egg issues. Yeah, I don't know how people eat breakfast without eggs. Yeah. Maybe you just skip it. Sometimes I just skip it or I have my shake. Yeah. 
And I'm okay with skipping breakfast if you're, especially if you're not hungry, because adding an intermittent fasting lifestyle into your life, I think, can be super healing, especially for the gut. Um, but it's not for everybody, and there's you know right ways and wrong ways to do it. But um, you know, eating dinner for breakfast is another good one. So what did you have last night for dinner? You can have it for breakfast. Not everybody likes that idea. I didn't like that idea in the beginning either, but you kind of get used to it. Um, so, so the seven day sugar cleanse gives you three meals and some snack ideas because the whole idea is to transfer over to eating foods that don't love you to foods that love you back. And, um, so I'm taking out those, those, um, high allergen foods. I put them in you get a shopping list, you get the recipes, you get a prep day instruction with the seven day sugar cleanse and, um, and everything you need to kind of put it together and plan it ahead of time. So you're not, you know, scrambling at five o'clock trying to figure out what's for dinner. Um, I also use the motto of um, cook once, eat twice or three or four times, meaning yep. that, you know, if we're going to take a rotisserie chicken and bake that, then we're going to make bone broth and save some of the meat to make chicken soup later on. Um, you know, and you're going to make enough for today's meal or, you know, tomorrow's meal and a meal after that. So the cook oh, yeah. I always do that. is huge. Yeah. Cause yeah. you got to save time. The biggest complaint people get is I don't want to spend so much time in the kitchen, but you know what? If you want health, you got to spend some time in the kitchen. So let's just do it the more effective and strategic way that we can. So you get all, all that in the meal plan. Plus you get three pre-recorded calls about how to start the middle of the cleanse, how you're feeling, how it's going, how to incorporate a few things and how to overcome this hurdle or that hurdle. And then the completion call is celebrating your successes because you got to celebrate. Uh, it doesn't have to be food celebration, but celebrate it. And then what do you do from here? You know, and there's, there's levels that you can go on depending on your goals and your compliments. Most people I'll tell you, uh, will say that I'm going to continue this way of eating. I felt great. And within seven days, believe it or not, people can feel less bloated, better sleep, losing inches and weight, depending on the person, um, less achy because sugar and grains equal pain. When we take them out, the pain subsides quite a bit. Um, and when they start eating these healing foods, you know, like one of them is bone broth that I have in there. Well, that's super healing. The glycine in bone broth is super healing for leaky gut and for your digestive tract. So there's all these good pearls in there. And then during the day, there's also a segment in there for, you know, um, you know, for more mental health type of things of implementation, little things that you can do to get your mind right and, and decision making that you are doing something good versus, oh, I can't have this or I can't have that. Because I find when people focus on what they can't have, it's a much more difficult process than when they focus on what they get to have and what they get to have is how it's going to give back to them to 10 times fold. Yeah. So it's it's fun. And um, the thing that I love about it has been going on for 12 plus years. Thousands of people have gone through it. And I'll tell you, there's not a single person who has done it that hasn't gotten some sort of um, health um, benefit from it that they have noticed in seven days, which is huge for me. Yeah, I like that. I like the way you designed it too. Yeah. Seven day easy sugar cleanse.com is where you can find that seven day challenge. Okay. So it's just easy sugar cleanse.com. This is Beth Schupinitz, a nutrition response practitioner and a blood work, blood functional blood work specialist. Jeez, that's my own thing. I kind of say it. <laughs> uh, um, we have a, heard her story about bronchitis, overcoming it, and preventing it, and healing it from what what's basically the gut and out. Yeah, it really is. So don't and just you know, focus on your lungs. I haven't had it since I was nineteen, and but I can't take antibiotics anymore because I've you know developed a resistance to them. So foods really do heal. And, um, it's a, it's, it's a big thing. Yeah. So. I, I would say growing up, I mean, my senior year of high school, I was on 18 different medications Oh wow! for lung related stuff. Yeah. And I'm not on a single medication. Haven't had asthma for years. That's awesome. So, and dairy was probably my number one factor. And then also the gut stuff too. I was on hordes and hordes of antibiotics growing up. So 
Yeah, they. It they works. It works. As, uh, as, uh, what was it? Exercise induced asthma. And they yeah, gave me an inhaler, me but I never used it. I was like, I don't want to use it. I had inhalers, nebulizers. I, I had everything going in. And then I had acid reflux. I got, you have all the stuff from the side effects and it was just yep. a mess. So, okay, go work with Beth. Um, do that seven day sugar cleanse. Beth, where can they find you besides the sugar cleanse? Um, I have um, a website or I have a Facebook group. Which one would you like? Facebook group. Um, inspiring healthy concepts is where they can find me. Okay. You got it. All right, guys. Have a great day. Thank you. Appreciate your help and, and all that you're doing for everybody. I really feel like I've gotten a lot from your teachings from me in the last couple of years. So thank you so much for everything Good. you're doing. I'm just beginning. So come awesome. along for the ride. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Carly. The health coaching certification program that I recommend is Functional Diagnostic Nutrition, or FDN. You can get started anytime. So grab the $250 off code from the show notes and go to fdntraining.com slash Dr. Kylie and get started. Don't wait any longer. Make 2023 your year. Do this for you, your family, and for those you're about to help. fdntraining.com slash Dr. Kylie. Ready to have all of your blood work compiled in one location where you can easily read it all together? Well, go grab my book, Why Are My Labs Normal? on Amazon. Grab it, learn how to read your own labs, and take the power back in your hands because your normal blood work is loaded with answers. You just got to have the right person reading it, and the right person can be you. Go grab it on Amazon, Why Are My Labs Normal? by Dr. Kylie Burton. Leave a review, and we'll see you on the next episode. <laughs>